Hey, it's Lucky. I've gotten a lot of tutorial requests for this RPG controller that I made, so I thought I'd show you how to set it up. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to create the controller itself, and how to set up the different layers so the foreground is transparent when obscuring the player. I've created a spaceship here as an example, but of course you can use any scene you want. Before we get started, I wanted to add a quick note on hiding stuff in video games. Every game has its own way of hiding foreground elements and walls, and it's up to you to decide when or how to hide them. In this video I'm going to show you how to create the effect and how I applied it to my game, but in the end it's up to you how to apply it to yours. Alright, let's get started. So, this will be the final product of this tutorial. It consists of three elements. The map, a camera rig, this is important for hiding the foreground, and our player controller. All three of these elements combined will result in this demo. As you can see the player is walking, foregrounds are hiding when we walk behind them, but staying visible when we're in front of them, and again hiding when we're behind them. Alright, what you're going to need for this project is this assets folder, it will be the first link in the description. It consists of the grid textures from Kenny.nl, it will be the second link, and a player model from Mixamo will be the third link, and two shaders I made myself, and I'll show you how to apply them of course. Alright, we can get started. So, let's open up Godot 4 and start a new project. I'm going to be naming mine Tutorial V2. You can see I've tried this before. Uh, I'm dropping it into my Godot 4 projects folder. But drop it wherever you want, just make sure it's in an empty folder. Click create and edit. The first thing we're going to do in this project is drag in our assets folder. So drag and drop the assets folder into your file system. Then we're going to set up the map. So in the top left, click 3D scene, rename it by double clicking it to world and add a child node by right clicking the world, add child node, and create a node 3D. Rename this one to map and in here we're going to create our map. I'm going to click right click, add child node, search for box, we're going to use this CSG box. Uh, we're using CSG boxes because they have easy collisions. You can just enable collisions, it's very easy. And for our floor, we're going to make this 10 meters by 1 meter by 10 meter in size in the top right. And let's create a material for our floor. So in our file system, right click, new folder, materials. This is not necessary, but it's very important to have nice organization in your projects. So, yeah. right click the materials folder, new resource, and search material, and use the standard 3D material. I'm going to call this one floor material. Open up the folder and double click the material, and here on the right we're going to set some parameters. For the albedo, we're going to use the grid texture from Kenny, so go into assets, textures, dark, I'm going to be using uh, texture 5, drop it into the texture, and in UV1 we're going to enable triplanar. Then you can drag and drop the material onto the floor, and you can see we got this nice grid. Next we're going to be creating the walls. So click on the floor, hit Ctrl D to duplicate it, and change the sizes. We're going to make a wall, so the X can be 1 meter, the Y is going to be 3 meter, and the Z can be 10, that's fine. Then we're going to hold down control again and drag on the X axis to move it to the side, hold down control, drag on the Y axis to move it up, and you can see it's not perfectly aligned, which is going to bug me, but it doesn't really matter. So you can grab the X axis, hold down control, move it back, you can see the snapping doesn't align. 
if this happens you can also hold down shift to go into a more detailed snapping and you can see it aligns then we're going to click this wall control d to duplicate it hold down control drag on the x-axis to move it over to the other side and then we're going to hold down shift and select the wall control d to duplicate holding down control rotate the y-axis so now we got this box you can see the edges are overlapping and there's an easy way to fix this is of course by adjusting the size and we know this wall is one meter in depth and this one is also one meter in depth which would take off two meters from the 10 meter wall here resulting in eight so you can set the z size to eight and now you can see it aligns nicely let's also create a material for the walls so in our material folder i'm gonna right click floor material hit duplicate and i'm gonna call this wall material double click it and i'm gonna use an orange texture orange texture 5 so drag and drop it into the texture and now you can drag and drop your wall material onto your walls oh. there you go and now we got the orange walls and the black floor all right The last thing you're going to do is enable collisions for all of these. So you can click the floor, shift click the last wall in the map and enable collisions by clicking use collisions. Last thing I'm going to do is rename all these. So the floor is going to be floor and all the walls are going to be wall. Alright, that's the map set up. So, the next thing we're going to do is set up our player. First we'll save this main scene by hitting Ctrl, Ctrl S. Uh, creating a new folder, Scenes, and saving main. Next we're going to create a folder in our Scenes folder called Player. New folder, Player, and we're going to create a new scene player. This player is going to have a different root type, so select the third option, click this icon and search for character body 3D, click pick and click OK. Right now it's giving us an error. This is because there's no collision shape set up for the player. So right click the player, add child node, search for collision shape 3D and in the top right in shape I'm going to select cylinder, holding down control and dragging the Y axis up. So the shape is on the origin. And next we're going to add the visuals. So I'm going to right click the player, add a child node, node 3D and rename it to visuals. And in here I'm going to drag the model. So in our assets, models, player. In Godot and many game engines, forward is actually negative z and you can see the z axis is shown with this arrow so our player is looking in the wrong direction so i'm going to hold down control rotate the y so it's in the right direction the next thing i'm going to do is right click the player model and click make local this is so we can have access to the animation player which has some animations All right, let's add the script. Click on our player node, click attach script and click on the folder icon. Create a new folder for your scripts. This is just for organization and create a folder for player. And in here, drop the player script and click. Oh, you want to make sure this template is enabled. Basic movement for character body 3D and click create. The first thing I'm going to do is change these inputs. For this, go into Project, Project Settings, Input Map, and in Add New, type Forward, Enter, Backward, 
enter left enter right enter and click on the little plus sign forward press w backwards s left a and right d now we can close out of this and replace the ui left right up and down with our own so left right forward and backward and next let's animate the player when it's walking for this we're going to need to keep track of whether or not the player is walking or not i will create a variable for this i'm calling it walking and setting it equal to false then we already have logic here for when we're moving and when we're standing still so in here i'm just gonna create new lines and say if if we're not walking exclamation point walking if we're not walking right now we are walking copy this is down here by the logic for not walking and we're going to invert it if we are walking we're not going to be walking then we're going to grab our animation player so we can animate the player walking when it's walking and not walking when it's not walking so drag the animation player holding down control drag it at the top of your code this is going to create a variable for the animation player double click it control c and down here if we are walking control v dot play the walking animation so right now, if we just started walking and we weren't walking before, play the walking animation. You could just paste it here. We mean every frame the walking animation is played. And we just want to play it if we're not currently playing the animation, just for performance. Copy this line, add it to the idle logic and animation.play idle. I'll actually show you these animations. You can click the animation player in the hierarchy and click here to preview the animations. Idle is just going to be standing around and walking is going to be walking. You want to make sure both of these are loops by this button in the top right. Ctrl S. Idle is also going to be a loop. Ctrl S. So let's see what it looks like now. Go back into our main scene, 3D, close out the map, and in the world, drop in the player scene. I'm gonna drag it up a little. So she's standing on the world origin, and I'm gonna add a camera. I'm gonna replace this camera, but just for testing, I'll add a camera. Drag the camera up a little, back a little, and rotate it down on the x-axis so it can see the player. And let's run it. So we can see the player and let's see what happens when we walk. You can see the animation is playing but the character is not rotating. So let's add this. Go back into the script and when we're walking we're going to want to rotate the visuals so go into our player scene close this out and again drag the visuals holding down control into the code and we'll get a variable for visuals and let's rotate this one copy the visuals and in our walking logic not in our animation walk logic because this only runs when we started walking and we want to rotate all the time not just when we start otherwise we just rotate to the first direction and after that never rotate again so in here paste visuals and type look at this is a function for making 3d nodes look at other points in the world and it's very handy for what we're doing and we're going to be wanting to look at the direction that we're walking so you can copy direction and paste it in. Ctrl 
control C, control S, I'm sorry, and run it again. And now you're going to notice a bug. Let's walk around. And you can see the player is going crazy. That's because it's looking at the direction, but the redirection is right here on the world origin. Direction is not relative to the player right now. This is very easy to add. Just after directions, add plus position. Oh. Position. So now it's the position of the player plus the direction. Let's run it again. And now you can see our player is walking and the right animations are playing. You can see the walking is too fast. She's sliding across the floor. So I'm just going to decrease the speed here at the top to 3. Control save. Run it again. That looks much better. Let's also add a light to our map so you can see what's going on. Let's go into main, 3D, in the map, right click, add child node, search for light, and I'm going to use an omni light. Could use a sun, but for this scene I like an omni light. Drag it up a little, and you can change the range of a light by dragging this red ball at the side. Make it a little bigger. Control S, run the scene again. And now we can actually see the player better. And you can see she's walking around, colliding with the walls. You can see the animations are starting and stopping quite abruptly. Uh, we can add some blend time between these animations to make it look more natural. So close this out, go into script. And we're going to be adding a ready function. This is a function that runs at the start of the program. Type func underscore ready. And then we can take our animation player, control C, control V, and type dot set blend time. And we want to set a blend time from idle to walking and with a time of 0 0.2 seconds. So if we're going from idle to the walking animation, blend these two animations for 0 0.2 seconds. Copy this line, paste it and flip around walk and idle. So it works the other way as well. Save it and run it. And now you can see she stops. It's subtle, but it helps. All right, that's the player controller set up. Now let's create the layers and the camera. Before we set up the new camera system, I wanted to explain what we're going to do. Uh, every mesh in Godot has a visual layer and every camera renders a certain amount of layers or just one layer. We're going to set all the elements we want to hide or partially hide to a specific layer and have two cameras, one rendering the background and one rendering the foreground with its own layer. Then we'll apply a shader to that second render, making the render opaque or cutting out a part where the player is standing. And this is how we achieve the effect. You can think of this as layers in image editing uh, software. We'll have our background layer with our floor and our background walls, which will always be rendered with our player. And then our foreground elements will be rendered on a second layer. And to this layer, we can apply effects like opacity, or we'll do a vignette where it's cut out around the player so you can always see the player. All right. I hope you have some idea now of what we're gonna do. Let me show you how to set it up. All right, let's set it up. First, we're going to create a new scene for the camera rig. So in my scenes and players folder, I'm going to click right click, create new scene. I'm going to call it camera rig and it's going to be a 3D scene. Click OK. Then we'll need a base camera to render our layers on. This camera is not going to render anything itself, but it's just going to contain the two layers. So let's add a child node, camera 3D, and let's call it base camera. So this layer doesn't need to render anything. So in the culling mask at the top right, you can disable 
every layer just for the performance save the scene and now we'll add our two cameras so right click base camera add sub viewport container this is going to contain the viewport of our second camera uh, we want to set it to the screen size which is represented with this blue line and you can do that by clicking this circle and clicking the bottom right option now it's fitted to the screen and to this we're going to add a viewport this is what's <coughs> this is what's going to render our uh, <coughs> this is going to render our first camera so to this we'll add a camera and we'll call this one background camera so this will be the camera that records the background layer with the player and the background walls then I'm gonna rename these real quick so background viewport container background viewport and I'm gonna select this one the viewport container and hit ctrl D to create a second one I'll call this foreground, foreground viewport container, foreground viewport, and foreground camera. And it's gonna have a two at the end because I just duplicated it. Just remove that. Now let's add a script to this camera rig. So on the top node, click add script. I'm gonna drop this in my scripts folder, player, camera rig, create. The viewports, which render the camera, let's go into here. You can see they're the wrong size and there's not a function built in for scaling this to the screen size. So we're gonna have to do this ourselves. So in the camera rig script, we're gonna need the viewport. So drag it, hold down control and drop it. So we get a variable for the viewport. Do the same for the foreground viewport. Foreground viewport. I'm going to create a function for resizing this to the screen. So, funk. resize. I will grab our background viewport, paste it in, click dot size equals, and we're going to get the size of the display, which is going to be display server dot window. get window get size I'm gonna copy this line and also do this for the foreground viewport and now we're gonna call it in the ready function so it resizes when we start the game the last thing we're gonna do is set the camera's position because they're childs of 2d nodes this might be a little confusing but Usually when you parent a 3D node to another 3D node, it's going to copy the transform automatically, but you can see, oh, you can see that's not happening. That's because there's a 2D node in the middle, so it doesn't know where its transform is. So we're going to have to do it in code, but first we'll need a point for where we want the cameras to be. And we're going to do this relative to the player. So in our player scene, I'm going to create an empty, no 3D. And this is going to be our camera point. And in the top here, select use local space so we can see where it is. I'm going to drag it back a little, drag it up a little, and then rotate it down. And again, Z negative is forward, so the opposite of the Z arrow. You can see right now it's looking at the player. Move it up a little bit more down a little more for that semi isometric look and that looks good to me so let's save this and now we're going to need this camera point in this script you could just pass uh, the player variable to the camera rig but we're actually going to create a global variable for the player just because it's nicer how you create global variables in godot it's very easy uh, i'm just going to go into my scripts folder create a new folder call it globals and if you don't know what a global variable is it's a variable that can be accessed from any script without a reference so it's basically like uh, a function or a method or a variable 
that can be called from anywhere. So inside global, we create a new script and call it game manager. And then we're going to open this script. We're going to remove all the code and just go for player. It's a note. And then we'll give it a function set player with a argument player node and we're going to set this player variable to the player that is passed in this function player node save this and now let's make this script uh, global so in project project settings auto load here at the top you can add a script and we're going to scripts globals game manager open add and now we'll have this game manager variable in all our scripts and we can access it from anywhere so let's go into the player and on ready we're going to set this player so we're going to go game manager dot set player self because this is the player so it's going to set the player as itself and now in the camera rig, we can access the player. Uh, so in process, we're going to need these two cameras. Drag and drop them to the top, hold control. So we can set the position of the camera equal to that camera point in the player. Also for the foreground camera. And here in process, this is a function that's going to run every frame. We're going to go background camera dot global transform transform meaning the scale the rotation and the position we're going to set that equal to game manager dot player dot camera points oh we're actually going to need to define the camera point so if you just go with me back to the player script we're just going to drag and drop that camera point holding down control into the top so now the player knows it has this camera point and we can access it from into from inside the camera rig. Dot camera points dot global transform. Do this for the oh, foreground camera as well. And then we'll go back into the main scene to add this camera rig. We can delete the testing camera. So right click delete node. And in our scenes player will add the camera rig to the world let's see if it works yep now you can see our camera is connected to that camera point for following around the player now one thing i'm going to do is i like my games to be uh, a little isometric or well, not really isometric just on a 45 degree angle so i'm going to rotate my player 45 degrees and then you can see it's on this axis and now let's hide this foreground so we'll set our walls that are in the foreground right here to visual layer 2 and not to 1 and all the background walls are already on 1 so that's fine and then let's go into the camera rig and for the background camera again like the layers in a photo file we're going to set our background camera to only render layer one so the background so just select one in the call mask and the foreground is only going to render layer two now if we run this you'll see nothing has changed oh there's one thing right now you can see we're only rendering the foreground and that's because the foreground render isn't transparent it's also rendering this gray box obscuring our background so we can go into the background viewport, hit transparent background, and also in the foreground viewport, hit transparent background. <coughs> and now when we run it, you can see it's working. However, everything just got very dark, and that's because lights are also on a specific layer. So if we go into main, click our light, you can see it also as a layer. So let's also make it light up the foreground layer. Run it again. Let's 
looking better, but it's still looking dark. So I'm actually going to set up a world environment. This is just ambient lighting. You can do that by clicking the three dots here and clicking Add Environment to Scene. Save it and run it. And it's looking much better. Alright, so now we've got the foreground on a different layer, although you can't see it right now. And the background on a different layer. Now, let's add this effect to the different layers. And that's why you need these shaders that I give you. They're very easy to apply. Just go into your foreground viewport node, and under canvas item material, you can select a material and select a shader material. Then we're going to open up the shader material, and in the shader hit quick load, and we'll do foreground shader one. Then let's save it, and let's run it. And now you can see the foreground is transparent and completely transparent around the player. I actually added some parameters in this shader. So you can tweak some things like base opacity. That's how opaque the uh, items are that are not near to the player. So right now you can see the background is completely visible when it's not in front of the player. But when you walk behind it, you can see through it. And you can also change the size of the of the vignette around the player, which is transparent, so you can make it a little bigger. Yeah, so that looks good. So that's the basic effect set up. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you is what if you have a wall that can be in front or behind the player. So I'm going to duplicate this foreground wall drag it in a little, resize it so it's smaller and drag it to the sides, maybe a little bigger, like that. Because now, if you have such a wall, it's going to look great when the player is just behind it, but when it's in front of it, it's not going to look that good. I mean, if this is what I talked about before in the video, if this is your type of game and you wanted to make rooms very clear and not be, uh, not have a lot of things hidden, this might be perfect for you, so maybe just keep it like this. But maybe you want it to be hidden when you're in front of it. So I'll show you how to do this. We'll just add a script to this wall. Uh, attach script. Go into our scripts folder. New folder. World. Auto hider. Name it whatever you want. And we're just gonna check if the player is in front or behind of this wall. So this is gonna be on the X axis. If it's here, it's gonna be on the Z axis. Or if your game is on another axis, you're gonna have to adjust the script to your style of game and your uh, axis that you're using. But for me, it's just on the X. So I can go into my script and, and create a function. Set to foreground. Four rounds. And in here I'm going to set the visual layers, and you can do it with this function, set layer mask value. So for the foreground it's going to be 2, comma true, and it's not going to be on the background. So 1 is going to be false. We'll also create set to background, which is just going to be inverted. So the uh, background layer is true and the foreground layer is false. And in process, I'm just going to check if game manager player. So if our player dot x is more than our position dot x. So if the player is in front of the wall, set to background layer and else set to foreground layer and then I'm quickly going to optimize this script because right now every frame the player is in front of the wall it's going to keep setting it to the background I'm not sure if it's a performance issue but just in case I'm going to set far layer equals zero 
And then in the set foreground layer, I'm going to check if it's not already on the foreground layer. So if layer is not equal to two, layer equals two. And then we're going to run this code so it only runs once when it changes. I'm just going to copy this for the set background layer. One, one. And now if you run the script, Oh, sorry. Of course, it's player dot. Position. And now you can see when you're in front of it, it's visible. But when we go behind it, it's hidden. So that's the basic effect set up. Have fun with it. If you create a cool game or something cool, be sure to link me. I'd love to see your creation. I hope this helped. If there's any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try and answer all of them. Yeah, thank you.